every single cell in our body has the exact same DNA. So whether it's in the brain, uh, the liver, the heart, wherever, it's the same DNA. But the DNA in the brain is working differently than the DNA in the liver and the heart, for example. So some things, um, you know, like changing the expression of the, that DNA so that in the brain it behaves like a brain and in the heart it behaves like a heart. Now, is that what microRNA is? Yeah, you got it. I mean, I think you're really speaking to the heart of what epigenetics is about, which is exciting because it's really more in the domain of what we can control through our choices. What I mean by that, yeah, is if you have the same 3 billion base pairs, right, of nucleotides that constitute the protein coding genes of the human genome, right? Mm -hmm. That's 2% of the total genome, but that's the part that we've been focused on for so long because that's the the blueprint for the protein body that we are. Well, why is a liver cell different than a heart cell or, you know, hair cell? And it's really just because some of the genes are turned on, some are off. It doesn't happen arbitrarily. It's not like, you know, all pre-programmed. It actually has to do with the environment. And that includes, of course, food and water and sunlight and and emotional and, uh, you know, sort of psychic um energies that that will actually change the environment of the cell so epigenetics encompasses that realm and basically kind of tells us wow we have a huge amount of choice when it comes to health expression because all the cells in our body are different simply because they have different types of exposures you know different environments and so so really rna fits into the picture because that's like a whole nother submerged iceberg Actually, RNAs are, are so complex that we're just starting to scratch the surface of what they are. And, and, and it's almost like a sea of constantly changing you know, proteins. DNAs are more stable, right, in terms of what they're producing. So, but there's a particular category of RNA that inhibits messenger RNA from transcribing the DNA into protein. And that's why microRNAs, although small, are very powerful because they can silence certain genes and so certain foods contain microRNAs I have to acknowledge that it's just amazing what we have accomplished as far as even being able to tabulate all the genes right that make up the human genome Mm -hmm. and that's been the primary focus is those protein coding genes and really protein science has been a big part of biology and medicine and I think we're seeing a um, pretty profound shift to uh, what are called RNAs, which is a whole nother part of the gene equation that is just starting to get more mainstream recognition.